ever wondered how much dough the commissioner makes? And did you know the Seattle Seahawks have an unexpected connection to a famous family? Join us as we uncover surprising facts about Super Bowl snacking and reveal the unexpected inspiration behind the Baltimore Ravens name. Strap on your helmets and grab some wings because these shocking facts are definitely not black and white. Kicking it off with a shocker, did you know an NFL commissioner once died in the stands during a game? Picture this, a typical football game with fans packed in the stadium cheering their hearts out. The players are giving it their all on the field, displaying their incredible skills, and there, among this sea of excited faces, sits the commissioner, Bart Bell himself, enjoying the action just like any other passionate fan. Little did anyone know that fate had something unimaginable in store. In a shocking turn of events, right there in the midst of the game, tragedy struck. It was as if time froze for a moment. The commissioner, who held such a major role in the NFL, tragically took his final breath in that very spot surrounded by the electric atmosphere of the game. Apparently, the man had a heart attack and passed away there and then. The spectators, players, and staff were left in a state of utter disbelief, unable to comprehend the magnitude of what had just happened. And while we're on the subject of commissioners, let's talk about how much money Roger Goodell makes. It's bound to leave your jaw on the floor. Did you know that Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, is by far the highest paid commissioner among all the major sports leagues in North America? It's true. In the seasons of 2019 to 2020 and 2020 to 2021, Goodell racked in a staggering 63.9 million. 63.9 million, y'all! Now hold on to your seats because that amount is mind-boggling when you compare it to what the commissioners of other leagues earn. Let's take a look at the numbers. Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, brings home $10 million each year, while Rob Manfred, the commissioner of the MLB, earns $17.5 million annually. Quite a difference, right? And when it comes to Gary Bredman, the NHL commissioner, his salary is believed to be on par with Silver's. Goodell's massive earnings have reached such unprecedented heights that it's created quite a buzz. In fact, people have become skeptical about bringing him on board due to the sheer expense associated with his services. It's as if his salary has become a barrier to entry for many organizations. But that's not the only less known fact about the NFL. There's also some secrets about the Seattle Seahawks that'll leave you stunned. Like the fact that the Seahawks were originally owned by none other than the Nordstrom family. Yes, you heard it right, the very same family known for their ownership of the upscale department store. Talk about an unexpected connection. Now, here's where it gets even more intriguing. When the Seahawks emerged victorious and clinched the Super Bowl championship in 2014, they wanted to show their gratitude and appreciation to the Nordstrom family for their ownership legacy. And how do they do it? In the most elegant and thoughtful manner possible. While celebrating, the team presented a Super Bowl ring to none other than John Nordstrom himself. And while we're on the subject of old connections, did you know about this merger from World War II? So during the horrible times of World War II, the player rosters in the NFL were significantly depleted, causing teams to face a major challenge. The situation became so dire that teams had to resort to a temporary measure to keep the game going. They merged. Let's travel back to the early 1940s. In 1943, the Pittsburgh Steelers, a well-known team, joined forces with the Philadelphia Eagles, creating a merged team for the season. Can you imagine the shock and excitement of fans seeing two rival teams come together as one? It was a temporary collaboration driven by the necessity of maintaining a competitive league during the war. But the surprises didn't end there. The following year in 1944, the Steelers found themselves merging again, this time with the Chicago Cardinals. But even when things got better after the war, some teams still struggled horribly. Take the Arizona Cardinals, for instance. The Cardinals hold the record for the longest postseason drought in NFL history. Can you believe it? For an excruciatingly long period spanning 51 years from 1947 all the way to 1998, the Cardinals were unable to secure a single victory in the postseason. That's right, five decades and one more year added on top of it. It's a mind-boggling stretch of time during which the team struggled to make their mark in the postseason and fell short of achieving that coveted win. And sometimes, when things get bad, players try to find a safety net for themselves. I mean, Tom Brady, the OG himself, made a professional resume for himself before he got drafted in case things in football didn't turn out the way he wanted. Tom Brady always dreamed of being a pro football player, inspired by his idol, Joe Montana. After finishing college in 1999, he wanted to play in the NFL, but Brady admits that he had some tough times in college and wasn't always picked first as a young athlete. That's why, at 22 years old, Brady made a resume with his summer jobs and internships. He wanted to be prepared with a backup plan just in case. His resume showed that he interned at Merrill Lynch in Ann Arbor, Michigan in 1998 and 1999. There, he learned about company strategy, researched stocks and mutual funds, updated client portfolios, and did administrative work. 
Bray also had other odd jobs, like being a park service manager at the Ann Arbor Summer Festival in 1996. He supervised park security and learned about dealing with customers and managing inventory. He really is a jack of all trades. And it's surprising that he ever doubted himself. I'm pretty sure he never would have guessed that he'd be the only player to cross the 100,000 yards milestone. This amazing achievement happened during a thrilling game against the Los Angeles Rams in 2022. Brady sealed the victory for his team with an impressive touchdown drive, covering 60 yards in just six plays during the final quarter of the game. Talk about coming through it when it counts. Let's break it down. Brady reached this historic milestone by completing a pass to running back Leonard Fournette. That one throw pushed him past the remarkable 100,000 yard mark, making him a true legend in the world of football. Here's another cool fact. It took Brady an incredible 374 career NFL games to reach this remarkable feat. But do you know what's even cooler? That it's gonna take you just two seconds to hit the subscribe button on this channel. Back to football. Let's tell you about the Green Bay Packers ticket wait list. The Packers, a beloved NFL team, has such a strong fan base that they have a wait list for people who want to get season tickets. Here's how it works. When the demand for tickets exceeds the available seats at Lambeau Field, the Packers put interested fans on a wait list. That means if you want season tickets, you have to join the wait list and patiently wait your turn. But here's the amazing part. The wait list is incredibly long. It has been reported to have over 130,000 names on it. That's right, more than 130,000 passionate fans eagerly waiting for their chance to secure season tickets. Crazy, right? And that isn't the only crazy fact. Wait till you hear how much food and drinks these people consume. What's Sunday football without some tasty chicken wings, especially during the Super Bowl weekend, right? Well, during this special time, people gobble up a mind-blowing 1.25 billion wings. Can you believe it? That's like devouring a whopping 162.5 million pounds of chicken. And it's not just wings that are in high demand. On Super Bowl Sunday, folks go crazy for snacks like potato chips and tortilla chips. In fact, they buy around 11.2 million pounds of potato chips and 8.2 million pounds of tortilla chips. Now, let's talk about the drinks. Football fans during Super Bowl weekend guzzle a jaw-dropping 325.5 million gallons of beer. That's like 50 million cases of the bubbly beverage. The cost of all those beer cans adds up to an astonishing $10.8 billion. That's enough liquid to fill an Olympic-sized pool almost 2,000 times. But wait, some people prefer soda over beer. During the big game, they spend a cool $2.37 million on soda. And finally, saving the best for last, here's a fact that I'm pretty sure none of you would have heard of. Apparently, the Baltimore Ravens aren't named for a bird. The Ravens got their name through a contest where fans could suggest their ideas. The winning entry, which received an impressive 33,000 votes, might surprise you. Contrary to what many think, the name isn't related to birds or any local symbolism. It actually pays homage to a famous poem written by Edgar Allan Poe called The Raven, which dates back to 1845. Edgar Allan Poe, who had ties to Baltimore, penned this eerie and captivating poem. Fans of the new team wanted a name that captured the dark and mysterious essence of the poem, so they chose Ravens because it invoked a sense of menace and foreboding, just like the Raven in Poe's work. It's a nod to the haunting atmosphere created by the famous line, quoth the Raven nevermore. And so, the Baltimore Ravens were born, not as a tribute to the bird itself, but as a way to embrace the chilling and enigmatic aura portrayed in Poe's literary masterpiece. Pretty wild, huh? Almost as wild as those touchdown celebrations which you can see by clicking right here on this video.